Good morning. Um, I'm today talking about STEC, Spatial Temporal Asset Catalog. Um, has anybody of you heard about STEC already? Or, well, yeah, that's great. Where do you have heard about it? Where have you heard about it? Where? Oh, oh anyway. <laughs> um, so that's an introductory talk. I'm just giving the basics uh, today. Um, and the basic for this was what is annoying about metadata, right? So um, if you have data and want to expose that to search engines so that users can use it, so you need to basically know a metadata standard and expose it or write XML and stuff like that. And um, also if you use it, you need to understand the metadata format and uh, we're trying to tackle that with focus on search and uh, discovery of metadata. Um, we may get trapped with this, of course. So if there is like uh, 40 metadata standards, then we do a new one and then there's 15 uh, competing metadata standards. So that might happen, but we try uh, to avoid this and of course give good reasons for why we're doing this. Um, so first of all, like at the moment when you're trying to search for geospatial data, then you're probably getting uh, to view any of these portals that are out there, uh, like dozens uh, of portals where you can download your data, like it, Copernicus Open Access Hub for Sentinel data or the NASA uh, CMR and so on and so on. But of course, to find your data, you need to know all these portals, right? So otherwise you won't be able to find the data anyway. And um, we could also like go and see whether there is something like a uh, dictionary where everybody puts in his data, but, or like, an, like a person that like, uh, views all over the data and puts together a dictionary about them. But then we already realized that there is too much data out there, like Yahoo is not a thing anymore where people uh, looked at the data and put into everything into a dictionary. So um, we now have crawlers like for Google, for example, where everything is in one place and you can just visit Google and find everything. So uh, we think finding things via Google or any other search engine is better than going through all of these portals to find data. Um, and of course, like there is going uh, on so much satellites uh, at the moment that there are petabytes of data and you just need good tools to find all the data. So for example, if you're going through um, looking into Sentinel data, then you get uh, this from ESA where it says if you just want a single granule, a single tile, then you get all this data. And what you really want in the end is just maybe the metadata and the actual uh, data file, right? So that's just these two things in this whole bunch of information that you get. Um, and then you have to look through all these files. Like if you have central to metadata XML files, it's 20 megabytes of XML that you need to go through. Um, for stack, that's only 22 kilobytes that you can, as a normal user, can really understand. Um, like for example, for comparison, the plain text Bible is just for thousand kilobytes, so that's quite a lot to read if you want to understand the data. Um, and you even might need to find some kind of like documentation how this all works and what it actually is, the data that you're finding there, the metadata. So um, why we're doing this now, there are many standards and proprietary solutions also for APIs that you can, like the portals, um, with very similar scopes and capabilities, but it would be a good idea to basically unify them and make them interoperable so that uh, a client can access all these APIs and all these data. Um, that's a barrier for adoption and so we thought about Stack could be a good idea to uh, evolve. Um, so what is Stack actually? It's basically defining a metadata uh, standard for or specification. It's not a standard because they're not like working for a standardization uh, company, but it's for uh, just a specification of what we think is useful uh, for geospatial catalogs and assets um, with a focus on search and discovery. So in most cases, you won't find any information how to process the data. There you can still link from stack to the original metadata for processing. But to actually first find and uh, discover the data, you can use stack. 
So um, it's very simple. It's JSON based. So most people can really read JSON as it's just a very thin layer on top of the uh, metadata. And it's extensible, so you don't need to write any, like, for example, for previous things, when, when you had XML, you needed to write an XSD schema and adopt it so you can add things. But now it's just JSON where you can put your own things into that in addition to what we have standardized already. Um, also, a different thing from other previous standards is that you have uh, also a static catalog that you can crawl. So um, you can basically put your metadata files together with your data or put it on top of that. Like if you have exposed central data, for example, in an uh, S3 storage bucket, you can open another S3 storage bucket with your static files uh, that are conformant to stack. And then you can crawl through all these metadata files. They are linked together uh, with links. And it's such that you don't need a server to run it. You just can put it on your, like, file storage, and then it's there, and Google can make use of it. You don't need to write any software for that or so, something like that. Um, that's the static catalogs, and then there is dynamic uh, APIs, of course, as well, because if there is, like, thousands and thousands of files, you probably need to put them into the database and index them so that you can better search for them. So you also expose an API, which is based on the recent uh, version of OGC API features, uh, the former WFS web feature service from the OGC. Um, and we just put a thin layer on top of this standard um, to make it uh, searchable. And it's an open specification, of course. That's why we're here, open source. Um, everybody can contribute. Um, and so what is it not? Um, it's not a full-fledged meta standard. As I said, it's not for processing stuff or so. It's basically really focusing on search and discovery. Although you can, if you want, put your processing information into that. Uh, it's extensible. Um, so also, it's not a replacement for the data provider's internal metadata. Um, so you can basically, from your uh, item file, you can link to your uh, ex other metadata or other files that you have, for previews and stuff like that. Um, it's not the single source of truth in this case. Um, and it's also not for all kinds of data sets. So it's just for spatial temporal. Um, and you don't really can expose things like additional documents. Like you can link to additional documents, but it's not meant for like putting other things in spatial temporal data into your stack catalog. Um, so, and as such, it's also not a replacement for ISO standards, for example, and stuff like that, OGC, CSW. Um, there is a recent uh, innovation plan for OGC catalogs or records, um, which is also a new API, and we try to align also with this effort. Um, so, what's the state of stack at the moment? Um, at the moment, we're at version 0 0.9, um, just released uh, some days ago. And uh, we're heading towards releasing the first stable version 1.0 in uh, mid, uh, like, third or fourth quarter of the, this year. Um, and there is also plans to separate the actual specification work for the metadata and the API in the next uh, weeks so that they're more uh, streamlined towards their use cases. Um, so what is this specification actually about? What do we expose there? So there's first, there are catalogs, collections, items, the API, and extensions and best practices. So what is all this about? Um, a catalog is basically a very rough uh, or very s small thing for cataloging. You can group your collections and items with it. Um, it's very simple. It's like basically just an ID, a description, and additional links to whatever you want to group. And then a collection is basically an addition of a catalog. It, 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 it extends it and adds collection-level metadata to it. For example, the extend, uh, spatial and temporal, um, license, provider, um, and all these things that you have like for... For example, if you want to expose Sentinel data, you want to talk that about what the Sentinel data actually is, like that which platform it is using, which uh, um, temporal coverage it has, spatial coverage it has, which license, where you can find licensing information, who's a provider, and so on and so on. Um, 
then um, this can be used standalone. So if you don't expose any assets, granules, whatever, um, you can only use it to expose your collections as well. Like for example, Google Earth Engine, if you know that, um, just exposes their collections and then you need to use their tools to actually use this data. So uh, you can find this data as collection then, but then it tells you that you need to use their tools. So if there is data also which you can't download in the um, traditional sense, then you can at least use it in any cloud provider um, that is out there and exposes it as stack collection. And uh, collections are also useful for summarizing the actual item data that is um, exposed. And items itself are the actual granules, so the uh, individual tiles. And items are basically GeoJSON features. So the feature is basically then the um, geometry of the asset that is exposed. And an asset, for example, in an item could be the file for band one, and then another asset is band two, and so on and so on. And all these assets can then be downloaded um, and provided with additional links, like, for example, the, uh, you, uh, the um, provider specific metadata in ISO format or whatever. And this actually is very nice if you um, combine it with uh, cloud optimized geotiffs. So if you can see here, I'm not sure whether, yeah, that. It's basically just a browser that is working on a GeoTIFF, uh, yeah, on a cloud-optimized GeoTIFF. Um, and ge cloud-optimized GeoTIFF is basically a GeoTIFF that is a bit different uh, structured. And with HTTP GET requests, range requests, you can basically, um, without any like server software, you can uh, browse it on a map. So, for example, this is I think Leaflet, and um, if you can see it. If it zooms out, then um, it basically, if you zoom in now, it loads the data, just the data it needs. So that there could be a 500 megabyte file um, behind that, and it just downloads the things you see here. So that's, of course, pretty nice if you don't want to expose the WMS, especially for that, and you can just download the data that you need and ex view it while discovering it, whether it contains the data you need or not. Um, the API itself is, as I said, aligned with OGC API features. Um, it's pretty simple, I think. There is a landing page where with capabilities. Um, there is collections that you can actually expose. For example, that would be Second and Sentinel 2. And then the items um, would be each granule that you can uh, download here as data. And then there is uh, the stack-specific search endpoints where you can basically search for whatever is in the files, like whether the cloud cover or um, the extend or the provider or the license and so on. Um, that's defined as open API documents, so pretty easy to use with the open API ecosystem as well to implement. Um, and then we have basically for items, the metadata fields are very slim. Like there is title and uh, extends and um, there you can specify some things like when the metadata has been created or updated. Um, but then, basically, this thing is in the core is very slim, and then you extend it with extensions. So, for example, for content, we have extensions for um, um, describing data cubes, for EO data, which is, in this case, electro-optical. Um, then for machine learning, um, to specify the labels, uh, point cloud data for SAR data. Um, then we have a specific one for satellite data, which is basically inherited from EO and SAR. And for scientific data, like, is, uh, exposing DOIs and stuff like that. And then for the API, of course, this is also in the core very slim, and then you can extend it via fields, for example, that you can say, I don't only want to um, a certain set of fields in my response so that it gets smaller. You can query it um, via some specifics. You can sort it. Um, and there is a transaction ex uh, extension to basically add and remove fields and update fields, uh, items and stuff like that. And of course, also for versioning, if there is like different versions of assets, then you can uh, version that. Um, there is a growing ecosystem behind Stack. Um, we have, a, for example, already a validator where you can just put your catalog into it and it validates it whether it's uh, okay and according to the Stack. Then there is an extension for intake. I don't know intake, but I, it was said it's, it's a big thing oh, oops. Um, in the Python world. Um, then there is PyStack for catalog creation and all work um, with uh, stack catalogs. 
Um, and similarly um, works set stack. Um, then there is a number of clients, for example, Stack Browser, which you already saw when we had this um, uh, cloud optimized GeoTIFF uh, preview there. Uh, this is basically a human readable version um, for the um, catalog, for the JSON files, which also expose, for example, schema.org um, uh, translations so that they can be crawled by Google and their new Google dataset search. Um, there is a QGIS plugin, um, there's set search for searching data, there's set fetch for fetching the data or downloading the data, and then there's set API browser, which is basically, um, so stack browser was more for the, um, for the um, static catalogs, and set API browser is more for the API uh, part, because there you can also search, and stack is browsers just for like um, go, li going through the links that are in the data. Um, then there is a couple of server implementations which you can use to expose your data, for example, Staccato in Java, um, Stack API, which is, I think, a Node.js application, and Set API PostgreSQL, which is basically, I think, Python with a Postgres database behind it. And um, this, for example, is a QGIS plugin where you can basically just specify your um, required uh, parameters and then uh, it searches for data and basically loads the data directly as cloud-optimized GeoTIFF into your QGIS uh, instance to work with. And then you can, as it's a uh, cloud-optimized GeoTIFF, also directly uh, zoom into that and it loads the appropriate data and so on. Um, it, we are working on basically um, making uh, several catalogs um, available, openly available. At the moment, there are Sentinel-1 and 2. Uh, Landsat 8 and USGS Landsat Collection 2 is directly um, op uh, offered as stack and cog catalogs from USGS. There's Seaverse 4, which is a Chinese Brazil satellite for uh, Earth observation. Uh, NAAP, uh, NASA CMR is also um, translated into stack. And there are a couple of more things that are coming uh, and are in preparation. And maybe in the future also your data. It's pretty simple to expose such things. So um, if you have data that want, you want to be found, then it's a good idea, I think, to uh, expose it as stack catalog. Um, here's an overview who is already exposing their data as stack and working with stack. Um, quite a number of uh, entities. Um, and now I maybe just show you a single example here. Like for example, this one is the is a catalog. So. Um, it basically just is JSON. You can, I guess most of you can read what is in there. It's, and it's basically uh, gives you an ID. It's Copernicus S2 here, and then a title, a description, what is a, it, it is about, a license, keywords, the provider information, the extent information, temporal, and, and all the other summary data that is like, for example, the uh, how to cite, what the um, ground sampling distance for the individual things is. Um, the constellation, platform names, um, projection information, uh, the bands, for example, which bands are in the actual assets that you can download, band one, band two, and so on, um, common names, wavelength, and the links that you can basically uh, visit to get more information. And that's a collection, and now you can basically also look at the items, um, which is a, then an individual granule. Um, it says, um, for example, which ID it has, um, which collection it belongs to, and there is, again, links to get uh, additional information, the bounding box of the granule, geometry um, assets that you can download basically now, um, which is JSON files or the JPEG 2000, uh, either a thumbnail or the actual data. And is there anything else in here? Yeah, some additional properties like cloud cover values um, and so on. So that's how it, it's working. And um, yeah, I'm happy to take your questions if there are any. Thank you very much for listening to this talk. Um, thank you.